Okay, so in this video we're going to apply the Suvat equations to a common problem of free fall under gravity, where essentially I've got a particle and the only force that acts on it is just gravity pulling it down to the ground. So I've got the ground level here, I've got some object that I'm modelling as a particle, uh, let's say it's 10 metres above the ground or something, and perhaps it might just start from rest and free fall, or perhaps I might even start it with a velocity upwards of, let's say, three meters per second and I'd like to be able to ask, answer some questions like uh, you know how long is it going to take for it to hit the ground, what's the maximum height it's going to get to up here, how long is it going to take to get to that height and we can answer all these with the Suvat equations. Now um, the acceleration due to gravity always acts in the downwards direction okay so uh, and it's 9.8 meters per second squared. Now this is a slight approximation, really it might be 9.81 something, sometimes people take it as 10, uh, we'll take it as 9.8 meters per second squared. That's just the constant acceleration that an object um, is subject to due to gravity at the surface of the Earth. Different places it might be, uh, you might get different gravitational forces, but on the surface of the Earth about 9.8 meters per second squared. And uh, the key thing with these problems is to just make sure you're careful with the directions. Okay, so let's imagine, uh, let's look, think about the VT graph of this um, particle. So it starts with a velocity of three meters per second upwards, and constant acceleration means that this is every second, this is going to go down by 9.8 meters per second. Okay, 9.8 meters per second squared. So actually, after one second, it'll be down at minus six. So, um, uh, so we've got a straight line. So what happens is the velocity goes up and up and up. There's a point at the top, which is here on the VT graph, where it'll just be instantaneously at rest somewhere. Okay, maybe maybe it'll get to here, and it'll have a point when V equals zero, and then it will start coming back down again. So there'll be another point on its way down where it's in the same place, but it's going um, downwards and at that point v will be negative okay so we have to set a direction to be positive so here we've said you know upwards is positive so downwards is uh, is negative okay so let's answer a couple of questions firstly um when does it get to the top here and how far up does it go okay well let's think about what we've got in uh suvat here and i've got u which is the initial velocity, which is 3 meters per second. A, now it's 9.8 meters per second squared downwards, so I need to write that as minus 9.8, it's in the downwards direction. Uh, v, for the purposes here, I want the, the end time, and, and I'm thinking of the end point for this part of the question as when the velocity is zero. Okay, so it's not actually where it ends, it's just the point that I'm interested in as the last, as you know, I want to know uh, the distance and the time at this point here. So that's the end for this little part of the problem. So v is zero at that point. Um, and I don't know s or t, okay? But that's fine, I've got the Suvat equations and that's exactly what I want to work out. So, so let's get the time first. That one, uh, we've got u, v and a, and we want t, so that one is v equals u plus a times t. So v is zero u is 3, a is minus 9.8, and t is what I'm trying to work out. So uh, so that's what we've got here. Okay, so I just get t equals uh, 3 divided by 9.8 then. And that's uh, 15 over 49. You could round it off if you wanted to for a final answer, but let me just leave it as that. That many seconds, that's when it'll be at the top here. Right, um, now, the one that has s, u, v, and a in it is v squared equals u squared plus 2as, so we can use that to work out the displacement from its initial position here um, when it's at the top. So at the top, v is 0, uh, u is 3, so that's 3 squared is 9, um, 2 times 9.8, so that's 19.6, but it's minus 19.6, uh, s so s equals 19.6 over 9, which is uh, 98 over 45, or about 2.17 uh, recurring, actually. Uh, but that's fine, let's just leave it as a fraction. And that's in meters. 
and that tells us how far above this initial level we are. So actually, if this is what I'm taking to be my u, where my initial velocity is, this is the level that I've got to take a zero, uh, a zero for the displacement. Okay, so um, so that's like a, the axis here is zero. So, okay, next question. What about how long it takes to get back to this point here? So it goes up and then it comes back down again. And the nice thing about the CVAT equations here is you don't need to look at this in two parts. Okay, so you don't need to look at the the, uh, the time to the top and then um, back here again to work it out. Actually, there will be some symmetry here, so I think I know what the answer is going to be in advance. But I want to show you uh, how to do this without necessarily knowing that. And so. All that's different here is I'm going to have. Um, now I don't necessarily at this stage know what v is here. All I know is that I want s to be zero again. And now something strange happens here, and you'll, and you'll see as we as we solve this. So, but it's really it's really useful and really nice. So I've got s, u, and a, and I want the time t when we're back to where we start. So I need to use s equals ut plus one half times a t squared and I put everything in 0 equals u times t so that's 3 t and uh, minus 4.9 t squared okay so I've got a quadratic in t and so I've got 0 equals if I factorize this t 3 minus 4.9 t so the solutions are t equals 0 and t equals 3 divided by 4.9, uh, which I could tidy up as 30 over 49 seconds. Right, now, two interesting things here. Firstly, the answer we found about the time when it was at the top of the path was 15 over 49, and this is exactly double that, so actually there's some symmetry here. The time it takes to go up is the same as the time it takes to go back down. And also, notice that both the initial position and the uh, you know the time of zero where we started comes out as a solution and so does the time when we're back here again so if I hadn't already worked this one out I don't need to work out the time to go up and the time to go down separately the mechanics of the Suvat equation here the Suvat equation here gives me both answers at once and that makes it really powerful okay so similarly if I want to know how long does it take to hit the ground without having done any of the previous parts I could just do the same thing but here is my s for my displacement I could put in minus 10 I want to know when is the displacement minus 10 so here I would just get minus 10 in here and now I'd have to solve this Suvat equation uh, which again is a quadratic so I've just got to solve 4.9 t squared minus 3 t minus 10 equals 0 at which point the simplest thing to do I guess is to use this silver calculator if you've got it and use the quadratic solver number 3 here and put in the uh, coefficients 4.9 minus 3 and minus 10 and I get the answer that t equals 1.77 there or minus 1.15 and so clearly the answer that we want is 1.77 it's going to be a positive amount of time it takes to go forward there um, and one thing you have to get used to in some of these problems is that you get these phantom solutions coming out, these negative answers as well. So for the purpose of your answer in an exam, so that you can just exclude that one. Um, why does that appear? Well, it's sort of like saying, okay, if I'd started one minus 1.15 seconds earlier, there would have been a speed I could have projected upwards with that would have got me to exactly this level uh, after that amount of time. And, you know, so it's like I, I could have started the problem down here 1.15 seconds earlier to get here, say, and then continued uh, the flight up and down. But anyway, you don't need to worry too much about that. The answer here clearly is the positive one here, 1.77 seconds. Okay, now there's only one type of question here where really you do have to think about the sort of journey up and down separately, which is if I wanted to ask something like, what is the total distance travelled? Uh, by this particle. Okay, so we're just assuming here that it goes up here and it stops immediately when it hits the ground. Uh, and see that questions where it asks, answers directly because the s in there is displacement. Okay. But actually, it's not. This is fine because what I've worked out 
already is the S, the displacement at the top here, and we found before that that was 98 over 45. So actually it travels, uh, so the distance travelled is going to be 98 over 45 going up, plus 98 over 45 coming down here, so two of those, and then this 10 meters down here, okay, which gives 14.36, if I round it off, meters in total. But the question for the time it gets here didn't require us to work out the time to go up there, and then somehow the time from there to there, that would be more complicated to work out actually, we could just work out the time here. So you just got to be a little bit careful about two things. Firstly, the direction that we do take the acceleration due to gravity to be n to be negative if we're choosing this way to be the positive direction, uh, and that uh, and to know that the Seufert equations are powerful enough to give us all the vector quantities, displacement, velocity, um, and also the times without doing anything too complex. And it's only when we want to do something like distance travelled that I would need to look at this in two parts. Okay. So that's that. I hope that was useful, and have a look at the other videos on this topic if you want some more help.